Welcome to Pocket Watch Podcast. I'm Zach. Cruz. Jake. And we're fucking Pocket Watch Podcast. Yes, yes sir. Laugh at us or learn with us. We're here to grow. And That's growing, we're fucking doing, man. the pocket watch podcast it's your boys what's up? what's up guys thank you for tuning in another week make sure you like follow share subscribe yes sir don't leave us what's up stay here we got we got a good episode for you nice quick one nice little you know some some what's up Mm-mm-mm. yes sir like always you know we putting that work in we're actually going to start doing asmr for you guys <laughs> All right, man. You guys ready? You ready? Ready to get this shit. You want to do the, start off with the pocket watch segment? Sure. Let's do it, man. So, this week's pocket watch segment, we're looking at Terrence Riley. Terrence Riley, CMO for Crocs. What is he still the CMO? Or is was he? CMO okay. for Crocs. Got them what he was like responsible for their big boom. Got Crocs on all the celebrities. Yeah, I think he was with them for like six years, right? Up until like 2020, which is like that's 2020. I'm wearing Crocs right now. Was it 2020 that he left? Yeah. Okay. So up until 2020, worked for Crocs, responsible for their big boom. Like he's he's regarded as like this marketing genius or whatever marketing guru. Um, what was it, like the viral? What was it called? They called them the viral trends. Yeah, how to how to how to generate viral demand viral was demand. his thing, and it's funny because he was talking about how his uh, two daughters is his main focus group, ah. and that's like a big influence on like the way he goes about this and stuff like that. But we kind of stumbled onto this guy because Zach was talking about like the, how the stand now he's president for Stanley, mm-hmm. the Stanley Cups. So now he's president for Stanley Cups. He's been president for Stanley Cups since 2021. 2020. Since 2020. Yeah, because I think he said from 2020 to 2021, they've seen like a $750 million increase in revenue for their Cups. And that's since Terrence Riley's been there. Mm -hmm. That was just the first year of him being there. Apparently, like, like their Stanley Cups ads on TikTok and stuff are getting like, it's had like two point something billion views and shit like that it's also it's also like who you connect with if you connect with the right influencers on social media and you pay them you know thirty thousand dollars to do a couple videos for you locked bro and this guy apparently responsible for like they're saying 300 percent of this one the quencher is like yeah the quencher yeah that's the one that they're like going viral on tiktok yeah like a 300 percent 300 percent year over year like growth in that product sales and he's all focused on the viral demand and stuff like that. Yeah, he's fucking. He's definitely trend You have to give him his respects. He's it's so crazy now. You know you are crushing your fucking marketing, um, like strategy when your fucking cup, your fucking cup makes it on StockX as a resale item, bro. People are reselling the fucking these Stanley cups for fucking. I see one go for twelve hundred dollars, bro. But like they're f- are they shortening the demand? Like, do they are they all so so start? they release like limited edition colors mm. and like color schemes, bro? And so like and like people buy them up. It's like fucking sneakers, bro. They do releases on sneakers. People buy them up and they fucking resell them. Supply and demand. That's where I see him as a genius too, right? Like, because even it's funny because like my marketing class that I took in my MBA program, bro, mm-hmm. it's hilarious. Like the whole freaking semester was about social media marketing, like yeah. promotions. This, this, and that, uh, like, influencer, like, working with influencers and stuff was, like, part of it. But, like, our professor, I feel like he was very much, like, yeah, it's a nice strategy, right? Like, it's kind of, like, what everybody thinks you should do. But, and that's why I like what Stanley's doing. Like, you have to couple that with a strategy, though, right? Like, have a color scheme type deal. So, like, okay, you're going to work with that one influencer, but that's not, like, your brand. That's not, like, everything. But... For Stanley, it kind of is a little bit, but like you got to couple it with like the quality. You got to couple it with like like the color scheme. Like they're doing that shit like Jordans, bro. Right? Like Uh this cut limited edition of this color scheme. And I don't know if they've always done limited edition color schemes, or I think it might be just something new that they started because of the recent hype. They're like, oh, this is another way to create 
like more hype for our stuff because people people that's one of the things bro and i'll be honest with you i think if you are walking around that big ass stanley cup you guys look stupid especially for the amount of money that you pay what what is the retail like the msrp on them or isn't it like 70 dollars for that cup or something like that probably but they got a lot of like fake skis out there christian buys all the face fake ones no but still like i'm just saying like i i like i think it's ridiculous even at seventy dollars, let alone fucking hundreds of dollars for a fucking cup. But it's supply and demand, so he's yeah. focused on creating that viral demand. Bro. Absolutely, I mean, absolutely. But I think it's funny though because everybody's like, "Oh, but it keeps my water cold for three days." I'm like, "Do you need to keep your water cold for three days? You don't drink enough water to be able to empty your bottle in three days. Like, how dark and cloudy and stinky is your piss?" Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> sorry, I wanted to just like there. mine. Anyways. <laughs> No, but it is kind of cool, too, because you kind of see um, two different ways. And this man, Terrence Riley, did it himself, right? So when he was CMO, Chief Marketing Officer for Crocs, right, the big thing he was doing was, and this was definitely not new. This is not new, but getting celebrities and shit, wearing them, all that kind of thing. Funny note, hmm. he got Crocs on StockX, too, for their for their, for their their limited edition designs. Yeah, bro. So his collabs and shit. That's his strategy. Like doing treating them like the Jordan releases and shit like like, like that, like different color waves or whatever. He, he, he gets them going, gets them hype, creates a little bit of hype for them. But it's two and then drops them into the edition. Yeah. Like with Crocs, he was like, Let me let me make sure like we do all these limited editions. Let me have uh he's got Bad Bunny wearing them, Justin Bieber, all these big celebrities trying to like Actively, strategically trying to get these celebrities to wear them. Like, hey, we'll do this and we'll put this kind of scheme out. Well, the the uh, the things you could put inside of the Crocs, what are they called? I don't know. Whatever. The, right? the, like, the little about. emojis and stuff that you could put on them. We'll make whatever. And that's not new. But pairing, using them with celebrities with the strategy of, like, putting out those different uh, limited of edition schemes or whatever that's very very smart very genius and then moving to a company like stanley with a cup is like how the fuck do you create viral demand for cups and the influencer route was the way he kind of they kind of chose with that one and wow like executed it to perfection on both yeah bro it's give, crazy give stanley riley a round of applause <laughs> we couldn't we couldn't find we couldn't find nothing on his net worth no. But I assume making so much bread, bro. You kind of could you find what his annual salary was? No, is that um, I couldn't find none of that, man. Those it's, are publicly traded companies. Shouldn't they have like that uh, like publicly available? If I if I look into it, it's probably not in the quick searches though. It probably will in the next couple. It will probably will in the next couple months because of the hype that he's creating. Somebody's going to do the research and create articles on it for sure. Yeah, I know. This guy is kind of like the other th- thing with this one, which is kind of different from the last Pacoba segment and some others. Probably more, he's like more famous than like a lottery winner or something like that, but also not, right? So it's like that guy you know is making fucking bread, bro. And it's like not famous. Like some of these things are making him famous, like how good he's doing, like being regarded as marketing guru and stuff like that. But outside of that, it's like. Not famous at all, but in the background of a lot of these big ass companies, just making fucking bread. Man. What were the other companies that he was a part of? There was some. There were some big companies that he was like, um, he was part of. Let me see. That had like recent trends. I forgot what it was. I forgot the companies off the top of my head. Terrence Riley. But like, Terrence I had his LinkedIn. I saw him on LinkedIn. Let me see. It's not in his LinkedIn though. It's not. Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe if you log in, maybe you can. I don't. I'm not logged in. Yeah, right here, President. I'm going to try to connect with him, see if he connects with me. Hey, that would be lit. Yo, Terrence Riley, accept my friend request, bro. All right. Experience. President Stanley, Chief Marketing Officer at Crocs. Yeah, that's all he's got. But there was That's like, all he's showing. There was other companies that he was a part of. He's got a bachelor's at Ryder University. Only a bachelor? That's it, bro. It's a bachelor's of arts. It's Whoa. super general. Wow. Yeah, man. I mean, wow, he could just be... that's a fucking bomb right there. Yeah, man. So Terrence Riley was able to be chief marketing officer of Crocs from 2013 to 2020, and then president of Stanley, 1913 is the name of the company, from April 2020 to now. And he only has a bachelor's degree. Wow. That is crazy. That That is impressive, bro. I will give that man... Hey, listen, I think the whole Stanley Cup craze is fucking pathetic and stupid, but... I will give that man his flowers 
And I, I actually appreciate the company more now because of the fact that, like, what he, he's done. He's going, yeah, he, he hasn't really, like, yeah, he's not doing, like, that quote-unquote, like, what you would think Mm-mm. people in those positions would have. But I, I would say, like, in and the, it's crazy because for us to get to those positions these days, I feel like we almost definitely need those and, things. And that kind of just goes to show that, like, <laughs> results can also bypass um, like the requirements You know what I mean mm-hmm. Cause I guarantee The Stanley company The Stanley company Has a A requirement For their fucking President More than like A bachelor in arts Yeah But like whenever Fucking this guy Puts a puts a resume On your desk And you see his history You kind of just be like Alright well fuck the bachelor Let's see what like What the fuck he's done You know what I mean Yeah It's different It's really different Damn he requires you To enter his email address To connect What do you mean so he's very private. Oh, yeah, you have to have his email address. To yeah, connect to with connect him? with him on LinkedIn, you need to have his email address. Wow, he's not playing with nobody, bro. He's only got ten total endorsements on LinkedIn. He's not really a LinkedIn connoisseur for how. Well, I don't know, I, what, what is an endorsement for people who don't know? I don't know what an endorsement is. So, like, people, you could put like skills or something on your profile, and then people could go in there and say, like, I endorse that skill. Like, I'm good at he, Excel or whatever is my skills. Then other people in your network could be like, yeah, like I, I, I co-sign, I co-sign these skills that this person's putting on their profile. He's mm. only got like six people and four people. He don't need fucking endorsements, bro. He's like, yo, go fucking look to see what fucking Crocs Revenue did when I was there. Yeah. All right. Check that's my articles. fucking endorsement. Google me. Yeah. Like Google go, me. Go like to the, go like to the stock, go to the stock market. That's my fucking endorsement. Fuck what other people got to say. He's a marathon runner. Yeah. Yep. He's what a, he did, like three or six or something like that? Yeah, he's run three marathons. He's a yep. marathon runner. He's a very determined dude. And then uh, he's a big Bruce Spring, Spring, Springsteen uh, fanatic. I don't know who the fuck that is. He's an older older artist. Uh, I never even heard of him. What, what's a song by him? I don't know. Sing one. I don't really know. Let me see. Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen. Let me see. Songs by... By Bruce Springsteen. All right, here we go. You ready? You're going to know this one. Might be connected to Bluetooth. No, my phone is here. Connect to Bluetooth. No, no, no. Let's connect to it, bro. Let me see. Let the people hear what's going on. Yo, it's funny. I'm. S- no, never mind. What happened? Songs by Bluetooth. Oh, I think whenever we're recording, we can't do the Bluetooth. That's kind of stupid. It's okay. We don't need to put do a Bruce Springsteen. That's stupid. Born to run. Born. Oh, born in the USA. Oh, okay. That's Bruce Springsteen. We don't need to play that one. I think everybody knows that. Yeah. Born in the USA. Okay, cool. That's cool. I didn't know that, though. Yeah. Anyways, who cares? All right. ADHD sidetrack. Let's move to... uh, uh, Current event. You ready for this one? I'm tired of people. I'm tired of people thinking tuna is not the best fish out there. Do a lot of people you talk to so, think tuna is not that one of the top fishes? And I think the reason for that, everybody thinks canned tuna, right? But that's like not like like yellowfin tuna or anything like that. Like if you were at like a high, high class restaurant, what kind of fish would you order? I'm going to be honest with you. Maybe salmon. I'm going to be real with you. I'm actually not a big fan of tuna. Well, here, just hear this. Record-breaking tuna sells for $789,000 in Tokyo. Oh, yeah. Big fucking tuna right there. Yeah, bro. But you don't understand. Those fucking tunas are like some, like, they're like fucking Wagyu. But imagine, like, not breeding them. Like, they're in nature. Imagine trying to fucking find a Wagyu cow in fucking nature, bro. Bro, I, I don't know. Tuna to me, like like when you when you look at like ahi and shit like that, like ooh, like that type that type of quality. That's not even like high high quality though. I know, but like people think of the canned tuna and it kind of like no, those yeah, are yeah. the scrapings. Those are what they use. Like those are all the scrapings, everything that they're cutting off. And that's not e- that's not even the cuts of like the cut uh, like the. That's the ground beef. That's of, not like, that's not the trim. Eye. Even the tuna though, the canned one, that's not trim good. Quality tuna That's like fucking Trash albacore tuna And shit like that Like the good quality tuna Like the yellow fin tuna The blue fin tunas Those are the good quality tunas Oh my gosh Those are badass catching though bro Yeah they are 
Yeah, they are. Okay. Well, that shit just blew my mind. They're massive, but... Oh, yeah. If you go to, like, a really good quality sushi, like, find, like, a nice bougie sushi place around your area and go get some fucking, some bluefin or yellowfin tuna sashimi. Little sashimi? Sashimi, yeah. That'd be... And try it and just see how different it is from, like, the fucking canned tuna. But I think a lot of people don't, like, a lot of, a lot of people won't eat raw fish either. I love me some fucking sushi. Yo, did you see that Alaska flight? Yeah. Did you see that, bro? Mm-hmm, was I that... Did. I was like, Chris Dan. I literally just saw it like probably like three like, hours ago. So Alaska flight twelve eighteen or something like that. I forgot what it was, but apparently they Deep took pressures. off, and and this is like my nightmare, bro. Like, bro, like, and it's funny because you know how everybody says like you're more safe in a plane than you are in a car, right? Like, way more people true. die in that cars that's every a, year. That's facts, right? And then, but the thing with like getting on a plane, like, I and I fly often. I guess, right? Like, I'll probably go on trips maybe three, four times a year or whatever. Probably fly to other... I'll probably fly on a plane, like, times two it. Like, maybe 14 times a year. Yeah. But every time, I do get that little, like... Like, I feel like I'm so out of control, like, as a passenger on the plane, you yeah. know? And I was listening to that story, and it, like, fueled, like, all those those fears, bro. Like, apparently, like, they took off uh, without closing the exit door properly. And, like, while they were still doing their ascending and, and you know, like, that that's that time, like, before, you know, you're still kind of doing your prayers and shit like that or whatever. And apparently you hear they heard, like, a big, like, pop, like a big pop. Uh-huh. And then you, they heard, like, a whole bunch of wind. And this this story was from a girl that was at the front of the aircraft or whatever uh-huh. the case is. But, uh, and then, like, apparently they just heard the engines, like, loud as fuck, like, the whole time. And then there's videos of people that were, like, right next to the door. Like, apparently, like, people that had their phones uh-huh. out and shit, like, like gone, like, flying out. But thank God, like, everybody had their seatbelts on at the time. Like, it happened early enough where everybody was still, like, secured and shit like that or whatever. But I was yeah. like, dude. Like- the, yeah, the plane, like, instantly depressurized. But, but honestly, I, I, I can't wait for the... And we could touch base on that in a few months because there's going to be an investigation on it. But I would like, I would love to see what failed because for those planes, they have sensors that tell you if the doors are not closed. Yeah. So something, something had to have failed that caused the door to open. It shit scares me, bro. Cause you know, and like, like they have redundant safety measures on those doors. It's like a multi safety latch system. Uh huh. So I wonder if somebody closed it and they just missed one of the latches or something like that and just kind of created a chain event. But yeah, no, it's crazy. It's that easy, bro. Like, that's why, like, I always get scared. Like, motherfuckers will mess up your sandwich, Mm -hmm. you know, like your order. Like, motherfuckers will change your oil and mess this up or whatever. And I always think, like, all it takes is one person to be having a bad day. Yeah. On one of those checks. Did you hear the the, uh, ATC uh, conversation or no? Mm -mm. Oh, the lady, like, freaking out. Bro, she wasn't. She was. She was actually calm, bro. Like we have to. We have to land. Like, yeah, but you know what really pissed me off, bro? A- ATC, and I know it's a really high. What is stress ATC? Air traffic controller. Okay. ATC, they kind of pissed because I actually watched something on. Like, I watch all all the airplane crashes. It's like something I like to watch. <laughs> Jeez. No, I do. Like, I watch all the YouTube. They have like uh, I watch like um, KC seven seven seventy three or something like that. Something like that. It's like seventy four gear or something like that. But it's like a guy named Casey. He's like a pilot and he does like viral debriefs. And there's like another guy that's like in Sweden or something like that. I forgot his name. Um, he does like also like the the breakdowns of everything. Like they do like a full invest. Like they do all the investigation. They put everything together. They do like the time events and they're professional pilots. Mm. So it's really cool. But I watch those all the time. And you almost always hear the ATC conversations because that's public records pretty much. And they are fucking like they make things so much more complicated every time. And the reason for that is because, like, for example, she said, she said, declaring her first call in, she said, declaring emergency, we are having, we had a depressurization, we need to land. Bro, after, like, five communications later, the plane, like, is this, are, are, are you guys saying emergency? Like, are you guys basically, like, are you guys declaring emergency? She goes, yes, this is an emergency. And then, like, a couple of calms later, they go, but are you declaring emergency? Or are you just doing an emergency landing? Because there's two different things. Okay. And then, the, dude, her first calm in was declaring an emergency. And they asked her how many passengers were on board, like, three times. Mm. Like, this pilot's trying to focus on a million other things. 
and you're bothering her with a bunch of stupid bullshit. It was a female pilot. It was a female pilot. Yeah, it was a fe- one that was on ATC was a female. There was multiple pilots on it. Right, right, right. So there was probably one that was manning the aircraft, uh-huh. which like they're supposed to focus on flying, and then you know, the other person that usually mans the comms. Sometimes there's a, a third depending on the flight. Nonetheless, the person that was like the person that's in the in the and like the not not the pilot in control of the PIC, uh-huh. but the other one. They also have other stuff that they have to do checklists for while the pilot in control in emergency situations like that is just focusing on getting there in one piece and getting on the ground. But there's like a checklist that's supposed to read out, but she's over here having to fucking worry about ATC yeah. not listening to her. Yeah, man. And that shit drives me crazy, bro. It's like her first calm was literally declaring an emergency rapid depressurization. Like, let's get me back. We're making we're making an emergency they landing. Flew around she answered all bit. the questions besides the only thing she was missing was how many souls are on board. I will say though, like, so like and luckily, it turned out to be okay. Like, nobody died or nothing like that. Yeah. But they were in the air for, like, post this emergency happening, and I'm sure they're starting the calls in or whatever. They were up in the air for, like, 30 minutes. Yeah, cause, they cause, so it takes down. time to, to um, it takes time to descend. Right. You can't just fucking nosedive down. Right. You got to do, like, a slow consent, a descend because you'll have too much airspeed. Right. So if you, have, if you come down too fast, you have too much airspeed. And then it, it's a pain ass. So you have to like do like a descent at a, like a decent rate. So even with all not that, just that, but you don't want to descend too fast. And then some shit happens. Your engine blows. Right. Engine goes out or you have like something the crazy shit that happens. And like you're going too fast. You don't have time to recuperate. Like you want like a nice slow descent. That just so like if your engines go out, you can just glide yourself down. Mm. You don't have to worry about anything. Yeah. But that shouldn't happen under pressurization. So even with that said, they did pretty good getting it back down. Oh, bro, the 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 amount of training that those guys go through in like in like scenarios, bro, is it's absolutely insane, bro. Like that is the one calming thing with that event where it's like, hey, nobody died. Like they were able to get back down. Like everybody was safe. Mm-hmm. Like they kind of executed that yeah. pretty well. And I'm pretty sure I don't know what plane was it that they had. No idea, but I'm pretty sure I think those planes look big though. I think those planes actually have. Um, I think the cockpit has its own pressurization system. Because the 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 issue with depressurization, uh, depressurization is that sixty five Boeing seven thirty seven seven thirty seven type in um, is Boeing seven thirty seven cockpit pressurized separately from uh, main hall. Because I think it is pressurized separately, but maybe not. Maybe it's like in the same system. Pressurized. Differently <laughs> Separate from Let's say separate from Like main hall or Whatever Because the issue With the depressurization Is not even like Anything Like the biggest thing Is the oxygen Cause I think it happened When they were at like 30,000 feet No Yeah it must have They were still on their way up So maybe they weren't At 30,000 Nah they got videos on it But Anyways Anyways the issue With the de- depressurization Is that you don't have oxygen above. So when you get to like about 10,000 feet, um, the effects of hypoxia start setting in above 10,000 feet is when hypoxia can start setting. But that's effects. why like those air masks or whatever drop down, right? Whenever the thing popped open. So the thing with the air mask in the, like in the passenger hall is that the oxygen is supposed to flow through them, but pilots always get priority. Oh really? Well, yeah. And usually, pri- pr- usually pilots have like their own independent tank systems. And I don't remember how much time is supposed to be for the air mask. I think like thirty minutes on that, so they should be fine. But there has been situations in the past where the air mask in the cargo hall did not work mm-hmm. because of electrical issues, or sometimes there was like electrical issues that happened, fires, whatever happened. But they, they didn't work. But the biggest thing is that the pilots need to get you guys because once once you're below ten thousand feet. You have adequate oxygen. You fine, and that's why. If you listen to the traffic control call, ATC was like, "Okay, go ahead and do a descent to twelve thousand feet," and the pilot said, "We need to get lower than that." And he said, "Okay, you're authorized to go to seven thousand feet." Because mm. she because like we bro, we don't have oxygen, bro. We got to get down below ten thousand feet so we have adequate oxygen so everybody's all good. And they proved the seven thousand feet, and then they made their descent. Eee, yeah. So that's why, like for example, that's when you travel places. The higher elevation You start having like that Those issues Yeah 
Like when you go when you fly a plane, I think um like Colorado and shit like that. Yeah, and Colorado is forty five hundred feet. Well, like Denver, depending mm-hmm. on certain parts, they go up to like I think eight thousand. But like um, that's why when you fly like an actual like plane, like the smaller planes that like I fly, they don't have, they don't have we don't have pressurization in our cabin because you're not going that high. Yes, but it's also because it's expensive. It's expensive as fuck, and you gotta do like a lot of you gotta do like a lot of inspections and shit for your pressurization. You gotta do like chamber pressurization tests and shit like that annually, and it's expensive to maintain. Huh. So and like, there's no reason for our planes to be flying above ten thousand feet. You know what I mean? But th- there's there's laws on how long you can fly at certain elevations. Whenever you have like a plane that doesn't have the pressurization systems, because hypoxia can set in, you can have issues with it. God damn. Yeah, so that's one of the things. It's actually funny. You want to hear something even crazier? Hmm. Scuba diving and flying. Right. You ever heard about that? No, but I know, yeah, you got to depressurize as you go deeper and deeper. Yes, yeah, so deeper. so in, so when you go scuba diving, you have to like, you have to like do like basically like rest for mm-hmm. depressurization for your, to go back up. But you're not supposed to fly in a plane after like a certain amount of hours after scuba diving. Really? Like going all the way back up? Yeah, because your your body already has a lot of nit- I believe it's nitrogen. I'm pretty sure your blood was still well. Even if you go down, you do like the proper ascend, your blood still has a bunch of nitrogen in your in your in your um, organs and tissues. Still have a bunch of nitrogen, and then if you go fly in a plane afterwards, all that nitrogen can be immediately released into your blood system, and you'll basically have like the same thing as if you were fucking went up immediately from scuba diving. Damn. So you have to like you, whenever you go scuba diving, you have to wait like a certain amount of like hours. I think it's I think it's like twenty four, forty hours on that before, before flying. And I don't know if that applies to commercial flights, but I know I for wonder sure how long because you almost exclusively go scuba diving on vacation, and shit yeah, like that, right? But like, I don't know if that applies to commercial planes that have pressurization systems. But what I was getting at is if somebody went scuba diving and they were on that flight and then that system depressurized, they would have some problems. Probably. They could possibly have issues. Ooh, that's what I was getting out of that. I know for one hundred percent, when you fly a plane without a pressurization cabin, you one thousand percent have to have like a wait rest period for that. That's like part of like our training that that we're taught for our our ground school. That's crazy. No fuck, I always get it confused. I don't even know which one it is. That's crazy. There you go. (laughs) Damn, bro. That's a nice little fun fact with Zach too. Yeah, fun facts with Zach. It's crazy, but yeah, it's a good way to end it, man. Yes, sir. Man. I feel like I was Don't be scared to fly guys Go ahead and fly Support your it's airlines Like honestly bro Statistically speaking These shits are so fucking rare You guys are fine Bro they um, got January First week of January There's already been a bunch of Crazy ass events Like I saw something on that too Where it's like This person listing out All the crazy events Which Some of those other ones We'll get to on the next episode But Starting 2024 With a bang baby Bang wow. Yes sir all right, guys. Make sure you subscribe, like. Thank you for fucking with us to the end. Um, we love y'all. Tune in next week. What's Pocket up? watch out.